Hello and welcome to my review for Tomorrow Never Dies. Tomorrow Never Dies is the 18th film in the James Bond franchise. Now, Tomorrow Never Dies used to be a film that I just didn't like. I thought it was only okay and it was just like not very good. And it is easily the second uh, weakest film starring Pierce Brosnan. The first one, of course, being, you know, that one. You know, don't go down in the day. Uh, <laughs> but he's been kind of dislike, uh, but... It, along with Octopus, it became uh, a James Bond film that if I wanted to watch a fun film, just like, a, you know, a sit down, a one that I can easily enjoy and have fun with, and it just doesn't matter if, like, story-wise, anything, just just fun with great action set pieces, great music, and, and a great story with great acting and stuff like that, then it would be either Octopus or Tomorrow Never Dies that I would go to, hence why Octopus recently became one of the ones I've seen the most, <laughs> it's because I just put it in every single time I wanted to, <laughs> for some fucking reason. But, um, it's just fun, you know, I mean, I think Tomorrow Never Dies is definitely, if you, if you hear the whole behind the scenes stories of how this production was one of the most rushed things, the script was being rewritten on, on the day of shooting, um, you know, it was also rushed because of the success of, uh, GoldenEye, and, um, it is, you know, it's one of those films where, it just has, you know, great stunts, great dialogue, and a solid script and some brilliant music. But it's just like when you hear that how rushed it was, considering how rushed it was and the final product we got. I think everyone behind the scenes did a tremendous job making from in this good, considering all of the behind the scenes scores and stuff, which also included some very interesting uh, tidbits about the music regarding this film and certain people potentially coming back, and they're not. But, uh, yeah, I just think Twine Never Dies has been, is a, is a really fun film. And I think Piers Brosnan is the one actor who has, uh, who's done more than at least two films, who actually has every single one of his films being actually at least passable, decent fun. Yes, I think Dino is fun, I mean, I mean, I do have to admit that with Sean, Thunderball uh, is certainly a weak point. Dr. No is not, as, certainly Dr. No is not as good as the others, but it's definitely better than Thunderball and it's definitely not, uh, when I say you've got the whole point where everything from Doctor No through to Diamonds Are Further with the exception of Thunderbolt are actually good but Thunderbolt lets it down uh, with Roger there's highs and lows you know Living and Die is good I enjoy Man with the Golden Gun Spider Love Me's Bully Moonraker I don't like Fiora is only is fun uh, Octopus is fun If You Three Kill is just okay you know there's ups and downs with Roger but I think Pierce has the most um I think Pierce has the most, you know, good set of films with Daniel Craig, obviously got a kiss in which is awesome. Uh, Quantum of Solace, which is really shit. Um, <laughs> Skyfall, which is fucking amazing. And Spectre, which is also, I think, I, I, think, I think Spectre's okay. But we'll get to Spectre when we get to Spectre. And, uh, yes, considering that we are coming near the end of the franchise now, I mean, you know, we're, we're about to, well, me watching them, we're about to enter the 2000s. But, uh, yeah, it does mean it's becoming to the end, so obviously once... Once the Bond series concludes, I'm going to be taking a week off of reviews. So there'll be a week where there'll be no content on my channel, other than other than the podcast, of course. And then after that week, I will restart with the first review of our brand new series, Iron Man, where we're reviewing, reviewing the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Iron Man all the way through to WandaVision. And then also I'll talk about Falcon and Winter Soldier when that comes out. I'm not going to be doing the one-shots or any of that or, 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 or the Netflix series or anything like that because I'm not... I, I'm a movie guy as much as I, I think that obviously I know WandaVision is the tiny exception to that role because it is more integrated than the Netflix shows, the one shots, stuff like that. But yeah, I'll be doing that. But again, back to Tom I Never Dies. We have this is the first film to ha to be scored by the absolutely fucking brilliant David Arnold. Standout tracks include White Knight, Company Car, Hamburg Breaking, and Backseat Driver with a big shout out to the original title song, Surrender by KD Lang, which is far superior to um Cheryl Crow's Tom Never Dies, which I mean don't get me wrong, Tom Never Dies is an okay song. But if I was if you told me I had to I could go back and choose which song they put in, Surrender or Tom Never Dies, I would ultimately choose Tom Never Die. Uh, I would ultimately choose Surrender, which is a different story to the next film, which has The World Is Not Enough by Garbage and The World Is Not Enough by Straw. And I think both those songs are solid, like really good songs. But at the end of the day I think it was the better choice to have the Arnold written, the Arnold and Black written uh, uh, garbage song rather than the, the straw song, which I think is really good. I recommend it. Go, go if you want to find it. It's a really good song. It sounds very music. Look at type into YouTube. The, the world is not enough straw, and it should come out straight away. But yeah, um, 
Uh, and then obviously a big shout out to Moby's James Bond theme reversion, which that single piece that was released, which came with the soundtrack album, Fortman Never Dies. And then also there was a whole other album made of his other remixes, but with, with, with the Twine Never Dies soundtrack album specifically, music-wise, Twine Never Dies is also quite an interesting one. Because so with the Twine Never Dies soundtrack album that was released, it only has music from the first half of the film. If you, if you read the track list, you, you should realise that. Hang on, let me just get it. Yeah, because you've got, obviously, the Shell Crow song, you've got White Knight, which is the pre-title sequence, The Sinking of Dev Devonshire, which is at the beginning of the film, Company Car, which is when he picks up his car, uh, Station Break, which is when he's inside Carver's building, uh, Paris and Bond, The Last Goodbye, Hamburg Break In, Hamburg Break Out, Dr. Kaufman, Hashtag Minus Three Send, uh, Underwater Discovery, Backseat Driver, and then, obviously, the Katie Lang song and the Moby's James Bond theme. So, obviously, the release that came out at the time of the film is lacking music from the second half of the film, which is a shame, because I have to admit, I do believe, if you put this with uh, Casino Royale, this is Arnold's best score, because it sounds so Bondy-esque. Don't get me wrong, I think Wadden's not enough, and Down of the Day's music is brilliant, specifically more so than Wadden's not enough, but I just, I, I, I love a good Barry-sounding score when one never dies. It's exactly that, while bringing more modern approach to it as well, so I think that's one of one never dies' standouts, is the score. But yeah, obviously, to counteract this, in the year 2000, uh, a, a second release of the of the score, whereas this track, whereas this, this soundtrack one has fifteen tracks, with three of them being, uh, well, two of them being sung songs, one of them being a bonus track. Uh, the they re they made another release of it with more tracks from the second half of the film, and it was a nineteen track score, which was technically eighteen score pieces, and then the final nineteenth track was a interview with David Arnold for that release, which is fun. Um, but yeah. The other thing to do with Tomorrow Never Dies and its soundtrack score is that, uh, much like Goldeneye and, and Licence to Kill, Barry was in, you know, was asked to return, and actually, Tomorrow Never Dies was the film out of those three that he was the closest to coming back for, because unlike Goldeneye, where he simply just passed it off, and unlike Licence to Kill, where he declined, he purposely, he declined because he had a, you know, a, a good reason not to do it due to his first surgery, Tomorrow Never Dies was the one where he actually initially signed on to do so, but they couldn't negotiate his fee, according to his agent at the time, who said in an interview at some point in the time, but more recently, uh, who said that they couldn't negotiate a fee, so he then passed on it, which is really a shame, but then also I kind of just would be okay with, like, I think their own score's brilliant. And obviously, what came of that is that he himself recommended, uh, before leaving the project properly, he uh, recommended, he himself, John Barry, recommended to Bobby Bockley, David Arnold, after hearing his, um, after hearing his shaken, uh, shaken, and st shaken not stirred, the David Arnold James Bond project album that he made, uh, which is just you know he he made a good album about you know his, you know he remixed a lot of the Bond songs and he got big name singers to re-sing them and stuff with Barry's approval obviously and the rights to it and stuff so he actually managed to do that quite well which I think is quite cool, and yeah, so that, he caught Barry, Barry's attention, and Barry recommended him to uh, Barbara Broccoli, and here we are with the Tomorrow Never Dies original score by David Arnold, and obviously, Tomorrow Never Dies is the last of those three films where it was said that Barry was at least somewhat asked to return, as obviously there was, he wasn't, there has been no comment about, obviously he wasn't asked to return for The World Is Not Enough, and, the, and obviously any film after that, because they'd, they'd found their man, David Arnold, who obviously didn't do as many films as Barry, but, but I mean, he also did uh, more than any other composer. He's the second he composer of the second most amount of Bond films after Barry, of course, because no one's going to beat that 14 film uh, run that he has, uh, which is <laughs> it's just mad. But yeah, um, yeah, that's Tomorrow Never Dies. It's a brilliant good film, I have to admit. The car chase is really fun. Uh, it's just fun. It's great, it's enjoyable, it's a good little romp if you need to, if you want to just pick a, a, a decent film to watch it. It's always, I have to admit, one thing I do love about it though is uh, Elliot Carver portrayed by um, Jonathan Price, who I think is a very underrated villain, and I struggle to think about who I prefer with, who I prefer villain-wise, Elliot Carver from this film, or Electric King from The World Is Not Enough, which we'll talk more about in depth tomorrow in The World Is Not Enough review, which is fun. 
but yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day. Uh, once again, in the description, letterbox review, which isn't again the more recent reviews from Golden Eye onwards have not been so much uh, in depth, and that's because I'm purely trying to test the waters for um, test the waters for for um, the whole just doing it off of what I can remember and you know from my memory rather than write re re reading what's written on the web on the page because if you go back and listen to the ones where I'm clearly reading off the script it sounds really weird whereas here from Golden Armors it sounds a bit more flow fu fluid sort of I'm able to do it properly so yeah I'm doing that and obviously I'm going to do that with I mean how quite I'm going to release the reviews because I don't want to watch a film in the evening wait until the next morning and record it I don't know maybe there might be two reviews a day <laughs> which is a bit pushy but on days where I don't have college work to do I can just sit watch two Marvel movies a day do two reviews yeah. You know, it's all fun. I'm not going to post, I'm not going to type any reviews for any of the Marvel movies on my letterbox. I will put the, give them stars, but I won't um, write any reviews. And if I do write a review, it will just be me, me, me putting the link to um, the YouTube review like Jeremy Johan does. But yeah, thank you guys for watching my Tomorrow Never Dies review in the description. Letterbox review, uh, link tree, uh, the podcast on YouTube, the podcast on episode one on soundcloud uh the podcast uh episode two episode podcast on soundcloud podcast on youtube uh woven wolfie on uh woven wolfie's youtube woven wolfie's uh link tree and uh, yeah that'll be about it uh, also i just want to mention if you're wondering why uh obviously yes they've gone on view the trailer audio is slightly louder is because that trailer song is so good and i wanted you guys to be able to hear it it's the best trailer music for any bond film I think personally, so it's that good. That I just I turn it up to whereas usually I have the trailer audios on twenty, and sometimes they just kick out and just turn themselves off. Uh, this one I push all the way up to forty five. So yeah, um, I tried my best to uh, make it sound as easy as possible. Damn, this do be twelve minutes long when I speak. Damn it, they do be longer when I speak on my own. Am I right? Usually these videos are about three, four, five minutes. The earlier ones when I'm reading off the script are that long. But here, where I'm going on my own, it's going to be proven to be quite long things to do. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.